Our next guest is actually going to interview me. Rebecca Robbins herself is a founder and CEO, advisor, board trustee, and best-selling author. So Rebecca, what's the first question you'd like to ask? Me? Well, first of all, I am so thrilled to be here with you. We're now unpacking story, your story. You're an inventor, TV presenter, sustainability game changer. So I don't know how much we're going to uncover in the next 10 minutes, but we're going to try. So first question is, um, I know a little bit, quite a lot about you and your journey, but let's tell the world, how did this all begin? What motivated you? And you know, where did it start on your big moment for you? Well, I'm 23 years old and I love two things. One of the things I really love is exploring the wilderness. That could be being outside, that could be kayaking to school, which I did sometimes, and that could be hiking. And then the other thing I love doing is inventing, building things, trying to solve problems with little machines I make. Something to notice, I like the process in both of these things. I feel like I'm driven by the process. So that led me into having a company where we remove microplastic particles from water, um, and then also studying chemistry. I do a master's in chemistry, and then also having my own TV show where we talk about sustainability, have loads of kids in the show who are all nerding out about their ideas, and ultimately we make the world a little bit of a better place. Well, I love this, because we talked about this earlier. You're such a deeply plural in terms of this. I love that term. Things. I need to add that to my bio. Hashtag plural. <laughs> you are so hashtag plural. I love this. You're involved in so many things, but also in such a deep way. For example, the work that you're doing with NextGen already. You're NextGen yourself, but you're already inspired the next gen coming up but talk to us a little bit about um, some of the sources of inspiration along the way because you know you said you're only 23 but already you've amassed so much and you've done so much so where do you seek your inspiration well for me i think actually being outside is the major inspiration giver for me i think we cannot actually feel strongly about the environmental issues or even food issues or anything to do with the planet without actually experiencing our planet so having this hunger to experience mm -hmm. if that is going to your local park just being outside that is a place where i get to recharge but also feel inspired and energized to make change and then also having some tools available to me to actually try and use that inspiration to do something also fuels it a bit more so that could be my lego box that could be you know some different materials in my lab but ultimately I am driven by being outside and just letting my mind roam and not being too boxed in. I love that. Well, you've, you've mentioned that the hashtag Lego now, so we have to roll with that, which happened to be the very first brand I worked with. Wow, um, right? that's cool. But also a brand born in the, de in the depression, which again, fun fact for the day, but I love that. That gets us into sort of creativity coming from constraint, which also really is a beautiful segue for us thinking about um, what is so important to you about World Food Food Day? And how does that matter to you? And, and how does that show up in your everyday? Well, I think that there's a lot of things that we can do that are good for the environment. And a lot of things that people are telling us that we can do that are good for the environment. But I think one thing that a lot of people neglect is what we eat. I think perhaps the footprint that we create through the food that we eat and what we put into our body is a twofold one, which makes it unique. It's both acting on us and on other people. So I feel like we actually don't give this enough attention. What are the good things we put into our body? We can feel better if we know that the food we are putting into our body is good for the environment around it too. And that is something, at least for me, that I feel very strongly about. I don't eat meat, that's a personal choice. I'm not here to preach about, uh, about that. But I feel like choosing wisely about what you want to eat is super important to me. And that's why I'm here on World Food Day which is always about knowledge and education and passing that on. And I mean, we can absolutely, I mean, if you were here today, you could sense the energy. It is almost <laughs> palpable talking to you, which I absolutely love. I think that's love. also from you as well. I love that. We're building it, right? Well, that, we have to quote the great Ursula Le Guin, who said, words are events. They do things and they change things. <laughs> and in that spirit, um, there is real urgency. Perhaps there has never been more urgency around what we're talking about and why. So, you know, how, would, how, would, how, how do you describe the urgency to you and how can we pass that on to the audience today? Well, I think what we need to remember is that there's always more people in the world. Every um, day or so, there's about 300,000 more people in the world. Mm -hmm. So that means that that's 300,000 more people to feed, that's 300,000 people to give more clothes to, and different things like this. So no matter how sustainable we are, that's still more materials we need to give. So we need to try and make those materials available to them. I think in a lot of cases, we do have sustainable choices for food. We do have nice alternatives of things that we can eat. And we also have the means to try and make our food a little bit safer. I, for one, work on microplastic pollution. 
Every week we consume about five grams of microplastic. That's like a credit card's worth of plastic. And that is something that really inherently worries me. So that's why I feel like actually looking at, for instance, organic farming actually reduces microplastics a lot. And you might think why, because they don't spread plastics on the field for non-organic food. But actually it's to do with that a lot of um, fertilizers and artificial things are stored in plastic products, uh, which then are spread on the field. So it might be an indirect cause. But then reducing single-use packaging is another one, and that's inherently part of food. Almost 75% of food is packed in single-use packaging. So maybe today is a day to also think about the impact that the things surrounding food can have on the environment. And for me, just maybe looking at the things that you have in your daily life that have unnecessary plastic inside, and think about the food that you're buying and see if there's a way that you can just reduce the footprint created with that food. And I love this, again, you are such a natural storyteller. And I think, you know, Rebecca Solnet talks a lot about we've got a crisis in storytelling. And I, and I love listening to you because there's always a new anecdote, something new you have to share. Uh, if there were one thing, and I love, by the way, the everyday contribution, because that is where the change making really, really happens. If there are one thing that everyone listening in right now could do, change making in the everyday that you would suggest to them, what would that be? So I could now be preachy and tell you guys out there to to stop buying plastic products or stop getting, I don't know, these different pieces of, of, of single-use plastic, but I think you already know that. So instead, I would like to say something that I said earlier, and that is go outside. It's the best thing you can do for the environment is go outside because inevitably you're gonna fall in love with the environment. And when you fall in love with the environment, that's the time when you really feel like you're part of it and that's when, A, you're going to do better. You're going to try and do good for the environment yourself. And there's so many materials out there. I post a lot on my social media, but so many great people tell you how to do this. And then B, you're going to tell other people about it. And remember, we're doing storytelling here today, but telling that story, making people energized and enthusiastic about doing good for the environment, that's the most important bit. I love that, going back to that great Ursula Le Guin quote as well. So you are a great change maker. You're doing so much for so many already, again, at 23. What can we all do to support you? And again, going back to your deeply plural self, you're involved in so many things. <laughs> what are the, let's, let's maybe choose three. Well, ways that you can support me or at least stay in touch with me and see what I'm up to is super simple. I'm on Instagram, Fionn Ferreira, um, that's my handle. But I also have a, kind of something slightly more secret more exclusive, but not really exclusive because anybody can join. Um, and that is actually my newsletter. I have a newsletter called Fionn's Green Journey where I just share things that are on my mind from the month. These could be like my sustainable innovations, my tips to people, or what it means to be a change maker. Um, and in this newsletter, I just like to share that story. It's called Fionn's Green Journey. Link is in my bio of my Instagram. But then if people want to actually help me, you can also, of course, get involved with the different work I do. I remove microplastics from water. You can totally get involved with that either through a donation or just looking at different uh, microplastic initiatives that we've kind of worked on and built with. Or of course, just sharing this story with other people is a great way you can get involved. I love that. And of course, as a note to everyone, Fionn speaks multiple languages, so you can also engage with him in many languages, which I love. We've, we've learned that. So <laughs> we have got just over one and a half minutes left. I have one question, which is favorite inventor from one inventor, the budding inventor, the inspiring inventor that you are, which inventors, scientists and change makers have inspired you? And I know a few of the stories from, <laughs> from the past couple of weeks where we've been chatting. Well, for me, I think something that, and somebody that I'm really, really inspired by is Michael Faraday. If you don't know Michael Faraday, he was a scientist here in the UK. Um, and he actually uh, was somebody who basically helped invent the battery. But not only was he an inventor, he started from totally resourceful materials. So he built a lot of his equipment and his lab in an old train carriage because his uh, family were actually working as train conductors. And he burnt up that carriage, the carriage exploded, so he was thrown out and he became an apprentice at the Royal Institution in London, where he started telling a lot of stories. So he was actually not hired as a scientist, but as a storyteller. And that was what started, what you probably know now, as the Christmas lectures and making the first one-way street in London to go up to that. So as a result, he became like the first science rock star as we know it, right? Doing experiments on stage. He also did some really kick-ass inventions. I mean, the battery, he found a lot of elements um, and he's just inspired a whole generation of young people to get into science. I think the Christmas lectures are an amazing initiative. And, and for me, I think this combination very, very plural, as you'd say it, hashtag plural, yeah. I think uh, is what makes me 
really admire. I love that. And that is definitely the watchword of the day, plural. Fionn, you have put the spotlight on so many people today. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful to put the spotlight, put the spotlight <laughs> on you and shine a light on your luminous self. You're absolutely amazing. 